On Sunday, June 13th, 2021, British bouldering star and qualified Olympian Shauna Coxie announced that she would retire from the competitive climbing scene after the upcoming Olympic Games in Tokyo. I don't plan on writing an obituary for every climber that retires this year, as I imagine there will actually be a lot of them. But given her status as a superstar female boulderer and given the timing of her announcement, when every story seems to revolve around the Olympic Games, sorry, Emichi, I figured it would be good to, you know, tell the story of her career because it has a noteworthy trajectory and she's as close to a bouldering purist as you can get in this era of like combined Olympic events. So here's how I think we should remember her career as one of the best ever female competition boulders. Shauna's first two years of World Cups, 2010 and 2011, she only competed at local World Cups in Sheffield and a couple in mainland Europe. And she's already making semifinals in each event, even though she's still in her teens. Then in 2012 and 2013, she's really committing to climbing in as many World Cups as she can. And she suddenly levels up to finishing nearly every event in fourth or third or second, fourth, second, fourth, fourth. She makes finals in 12 of the 13 events in those two years, which is remarkably consistent, but also maybe a little bit surprising that she didn't manage to break through and earn a gold uh, with that kind of high performance level. Keep in mind, that said, that 2012 and 2013 are peak Anastor and Akio Noguchi. In 2013, of course, is Anastor's arguably, you know, the best or most dominant bouldering season ever that we've ever seen from an athlete. Remember that uh, Yanya's season sweep of 2019 was only six events long, whereas Anna's season was eight events. She only won seven of them, came second very narrowly by a single stupid attempt. So you might be able to say that 2013 was, was a more impressive season than 2019. You can argue that somewhere else. But anyway, just painting the picture that 2012 and 2013 were dominated by these stars. And aside from Anna and Akio's dominance, you had athletes uh, in those early years peaking as well. Uh, Melissa Leneve, Yula Verm, Alex Puccio. Like these were climbers at their top. It was a really stacked period where they're making every single final. And all of a sudden, this British girl, Shauna, still in her teens, is finishing second and third and fourth among that field. How quickly she became instantly relevant is remarkable. Uh, but so is how deep and brutal the top of the field was at that time. Uh, I don't want to end in tragedy, so we're going to go forward in time a little bit. So time travel to the end of her career. So on the tail end of Shauna's uh, career, she got bodied by injuries and surgeries. There's no other way to say it, which she's still dealing with today. At the final World Cup stop in 2016, she injured her shoulder and required surgery, which made her withdraw from the Paris World Championships, which she would have been the favorite to win. At the start of 2018, she tore a pulley outside, never climb outside, kids, uh, and she couldn't shake off that pulley injury uh, in time for the competition season, which contributed to a medalless 2018, unfortunately. In December 2019, now a qualified Olympian and preparing for what would be the final stretch of training before the 2020 Olympics, she needed knee surgery, which led to complications that required another knee surgery in the summer of 2020, to which she tacked on wrist surgery as well because the Olympics were postponed at this point, so you might as well cram all your surgeries in and get them out of the way, right? During the second knee surgery, she received an epidural which caused back pain uh, and that needed hospital treatment in early 2021, just a couple months ago. Um, and that still that pain still plagues her, as she noted after her disappointing result a few weeks ago in Salt Lake City. So put all that stuff together. We're talking like shoulder surgery, torn pulley, knee surgery, knee surgery, wrist surgery, back pain from all the surgeries, right? I can't think of anyone else who's had to cope with so many serious injuries or that many surgeries in such a short time. Shauna basically turned 23, which is pretty much your average female bouldering age, and instantly got dummied by a lifetime of health problems, immediately changing the story of her career from someone who was entering the fruitful peak performance years to all of a sudden an athlete dealing with the rehab of like a 50 year old mountaineer. So to summarize the bookends of Shauna's career, she reached a very high level very early, but did so among a field of stacked star climbers and maybe had some, some mental uh, issues holding her back from breaking through that field. And in the later years, plagued by an unbelievable load of injuries and, uh, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, which uh, still plagues us to this day. 
So these two bookends kind of set the framework for my final point where we can lighten the mood a little bit. 2014 was the year that Shauna finally broke through and started winning events. After a narrow second and third in Chongqing and Baku, she bested the stacked field in Grindelwald and proved it wasn't a fluke by winning in Innsbruck by an entire top a couple weeks later. She stayed consistently in finals, if not on the podium, through 2014 and 2015, winning her third gold medal at the end of 2015 in Munich. That consistency helped her earn the overall silver in 14 and 15, improving on her bronze from back in 2012. In 2016, she finally reached her peak, winning the first three events of the year and following it up with another gold and two silvers, and we can just ignore her ninth place in uh, Mumbai. This locked in her gold season overall, even before her win at the Munich finale but her knee injury ultimately stopped her from defending her number one rank at the World Championships later that year in Paris, as we already mentioned. Her repeat overall win in 2017, winning the gold season medal for a second time back-to-back, -back, uh, was therefore even more rem remarkable because she did it after that surgery and recovery. That year, she won four gold medals, uh, two silvers behind the curious young talent from Slovenia, Janja Garnbret, and a bronze behind the unrelenting Akio Noguchi. Shauna at this point was the dominant star boulder on the scene and all eyes were on her as we were approaching the Olympics. And to mention, by this point, Shauna's competition had also changed a lot. Um, while Akio Noguchi absolutely refused to retire, those other climbers like Anna Storr, Melissa Laneve, Eula Verm, Alex Puccio, the ones I mentioned earlier in her career, they were all fading from the scene, if not having retired completely. Instead, new contenders like Miho Nanaka, Yanya Garnbret, and Megan Mascarenas appeared to be the ones that Shauna would have to beat as she climbed into the future. But unfortunately, as we already covered, her injuries ended up being the more devastating opponent. For someone who's been a pro climber for around a decade and who's made so many finals, Shauna's golden period, that duration from her first gold medal to her last gold medal, is remarkably short. Shauna collected 11 gold bouldering medals and won two seasons overall, and she did it all within just a four-year window from 2014 to 2017. Only four female climbers have more gold medals in bouldering than Shauna, and those are the legends Anna Storr, Akio Noguchi, and Sandrine LeVay, plus the current phenom Yanya Garnbret. Now, Yanya is only halfway through her career so far, and, and Sandrine's era of the early 2000s had really different calendar and very different field from those of today. But if you take the peak four consecutive years of each of those athletes, so you pick the best, you know, I just said it, the best four consecutive years for each of those athletes. Um, Shauna's medal count holds up extremely well when you compare her four years against the best four years of the others. In short, and as title on the screen, Shauna made hay while the sun was still shining. Surely she would have liked for a longer period of success and injury-free climbing, but at least she knows that her time in good health was very well rewarded. On top of that, until her most recent and now supposedly last ever Boulder World Cup in Salt Lake City, she never once missed a semi-final, which is an extraordinary showing of consistent skill. So while she won't get to earn gold medals in two different decades like Anna and Akio, her period of success is of that caliber. And I believe that those short four golden years and her career high level performance comfortably places her as the fifth greatest female competition boulderer in history. Shauna's retirement announcement, though, comes at a time of pressure and struggle and really big changes for her. Uh, the machinations of the Olympic monster are forcing her to climb in Tokyo, even though she just posted her worst bouldering results ever and is clearly not out of the woods from her injuries just yet, which has to be discouraging with now so little time before the big show. On top of that, she finally got married after postponing her wedding uh, for COVID, and she's probably experiencing, or I hope she's experiencing, a lot of domestic bliss. Her Instagram story shows her doing home renovations and just having a good time with this new life, and I think we're all really happy for her. But that kind of fun has to be, you know, a lot more fun than, you know, just grinding through all this training uh, before the Olympics after so much time away from the circuit, right? Before or between her poor showing in Salt Lake City 
and her decision to skip any more events before the Olympics and her retirement announcement, this lowers expectations on her for her performance in Tokyo. And I've said before that the Olympics aren't a make or break for any competitive climber just because the format is so weird. Um, so she could lose the thing. She could come dead last and it wouldn't really make me think any less of her. But as one of the first qualified athletes and being an English speaking athlete, I did have hopes that if she won, she could become a world famous spokesperson for the sport. We're just gonna have to wait until August to see if she really does manage to give it her all uh, and, and have that performance of a lifetime uh, in Tokyo. However she does in Tokyo though, she'll stay busy with her different ventures in climbing, uh, with the opportunities that she's earned from her career and from that super cool MBE, uh, and of course with her family life. But I really hope, you know, hopefully early next year, she can visit something like the Quiff or some other big local event with a full crowd and receive that like big, loud, roaring thank you that Shauna deserves for the career that she's uh, had, um, I'm sure just being such a huge name from from uh, from from Britain. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's been a while since we've had one of those super strong competitors from the UK. You know, hopefully she can stand at that same level, those same legendary names like Ben Moon or uh, uh, Jerry Moffat. Anyway, that's kind of what I think about Shauna's career. Got a little windy at the end. Sorry about that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this kind of stuff, uh, you can always like, subscribe, leave a comment. Join the Plastic Weekly Discord where we watch competitions together. And of course, if you want to support the show, you can visit the Patreon, earn yourself some stickers or ask a question on one of our future interviews, things like that. Uh, so if you're a Shauna fan, best of luck in Tokyo. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.